We are going to be very interested in finding points in what's called the coordinate plane. Now, before we talk about the coordinate plane, I'm going to say what a plane is. A plane is a flat surface that extends forever in all directions. Now, you might think about a plane being like the surface of a sheet of paper. However, it's important to keep in mind that a plane doesn't have a front and a back. Instead, if you turn it over, you see the same thing from the other side. So in that sense, it's more like a window than a sheet of paper. Think if you drew on the inside of a window and then went around and looked at it from the outside. A plane also has no thickness. A piece of paper, you know, it's very, very thin, but it has some thickness. A plane doesn't have any thickness at all. And a plane extends forever. There's no going off the edge of a plane. You just keep going forever and ever. If you're drawing something in a plane and you find that you're going off the edge of a piece of paper, it's because you were drawing too close to the edge of the piece of paper. The plane itself doesn't have an edge. Of course, we're only going to be interested in drawing in a little piece of a plane. So typically our drawings will fit on a piece of paper. Okay, how do we turn a plane into a coordinate plane? Well, the first thing we do is we pick a point of reference called the origin. So let's say I pick this point right here as my origin. Then we draw a horizontal number line with the origin at zero. So just like a number line, we label some of the numbers. Notice we haven't labeled all the numbers. Just because we don't have a label at, for example, the number 3 fourths, doesn't mean the number 3 fourths doesn't exist on our number line. It just means that we haven't made a mark at it. OK, so we've drawn a horizontal number line with the origin at 0. We also draw a vertical number line. And again, notice that even though I haven't labeled, for example, 7 ninths, 7 ninths is there in between 0 and 1. So things to note. Positive numbers are to the right of 0 on the x-axis and above 0 on the y-axis. OK, what good does this do us? We use this coordinate plane to describe where points are. We imagine a vertical line for each number marked on the x-axis. So for example, this vertical line corresponds to the number 2. This vertical line corresponds to the number negative 3. And we also have vertical lines for the numbers that are not actually marked on the x-axis. So if I take my unit from 0 to 1, split it into four equal pieces, and then take 1, 2, 3 of them, this vertical line corresponds to the number 3 fourths, for example. So we imagine a vertical line for each number marked on the x-axis. We imagine a horizontal line for each number on the y-axis. So this horizontal line represents the number negative 2. This horizontal line represents the number positive 1. And again, this still counts the points that are not actually marked on the axes. So if I take my unit and split each unit into two equal parts, and then count out one, two, three, four, five of them. This horizontal line corresponds to the number five halves. OK. How do we use this to say what a point is then? A point is represented by an ordered pair xy. The x coordinate tells us which one of the vertical lines our point is on. The y-coordinate tells us which one of the horizontal lines our point is on. So for example, 
let's say we want to plot, that is draw, the point negative 3 comma 1. We would draw the vertical line through negative 3 on the x-axis. We would draw the horizontal line through 1 on the y-axis. And the place where they cross is the point negative 3 comma 1. Let's do another example. Let's suppose we want to plot the point 2, 3. Well, here's 2 on the x-axis. So we draw the vertical line that represents the number 2. Here's 3 on the y-axis. So we draw the horizontal line that represents the number 3. This point where they cross is the point 2, 3. One more example. Suppose we want to plot the point negative 2, comma, 3 halves. Well, first we find the point negative 2 on the x-axis. We draw the vertical line through that point. This represents the number negative 2. Now, 3 halves we don't see marked. So we need to figure out where that ought to be. We take each unit on the y-axis and cut it into two equal parts. And then we count out one, two, three parts like that. This is three halves on the y-axis. We draw the horizontal line through there. And this line represents three halves. Finally, we go to the point where those two lines cross. And this point here is the point negative 2, comma, 3 halves.